So today I'll speak on the okay. occasion of Narasimha Chaturdashi on the theme of how God protects. And I'll have a PowerPoint, so I'll be sharing my screen. We'll start with one of the prayers from Prahlad Maharaj, and then we'll move forward. So this is seven nine sixteen. So Prahlad Maharaj is praying. Rastosmyaham krupana vatsala dusa ogra. संसार चक्र कदनाद ग्रसताम प्रणीता बद्धत्व कर्म भीर योषिताम ते अंग मुक्तुलम प्रीतो अपवर्ग शरणम वयसे कदानु तो प्रलाद महाराज प्रेयर्स आर ऑफर्ड एट द क्लाइमैक्स ऑफ द स्टोरी इन द होल स्टोरी प्रलाद हैज बीन परसिक्यूटेड फॉर सो लॉन्ग and now is his moment of victory and glory and yet what is he saying over here he is saying my dear lord trustos me trustos me i am afflicted i am fearful aham krupana vatsala is a beautiful describer of the lord he says that normally we think of the lord as bhakta vatsala he is the lover of his devotees he is of course the lover of his devotees but his love is not restricted to his devotees alone he is also krupana vatsala krupana vatsala means he is a lover of even the krupanas krupanas are those who are miserly the shastras explain that our human life is like a wealth you know if we invest our wealth well we can multiply it so if this human life we invest in the service of the lord we can multiply it unlimitedly and gain eternal life but those who don't invest their life like that they are krupanas this is you are krupana vatsala so you so he is referring to himself i am a miser i belong to a family of misers so dus ogra samsar chakra dus ogra that the saha is to me saha is to uh, tolerate dussa that is very difficult to all ugra it's it's fears what is that fear thing samsar chakra the cycle of birth and death the wheel of birth and death kadanat grasatam pranitah and what is so terrible about it it's so terrible that he is saying the brutality of material nature is seen especially in nature sometimes when we live in cities we may think oh if i can go to natural place it's so peaceful well yes it's peaceful at one level but then we also say that there's a law of the jungle might is right so a tiger can pounce on a deer and rip apart its body and devour it this is in this material world one living being devours another living being now most of us we probably born up and brought up in relatively a peaceful period in human history after this from this first world war second there was a depression 1910 was the first 1915 was the first world war 1929 was the big depression 1930s 1939 onwards was the second world war so that first half of the 20th century 20th century was very disastrous but after that there was relative peace and now suddenly out of nowhere in the last 2 3 months this big crisis has come upon uh, come upon us and it's like one tiny virus you know if we consider that is now threatening to devour humanity all the virus particles across the world even if they in, in afflict one tenth of humanity all those virus particles will amount to just 1 gram and that 1 gram of virus all the billions of virus together will be 1 gram but they are threatening to devour humanity so this is grasatam pranitah baddhasva karma bhir so he's saying this material world is a very dangerous place and why am i trapped over here baddhasva karma bhir by my own karma i am bound here ushatam te angri moolam my dear lord angri moolam shatam 
you are transcendental lord when will you call me to your lotus feet angri moolam prito apavarga sharanam vayase kadanu i simply long for the time when you who are the sh- shelter from apavarga apavar you are the shelter of apavarga that means the shelter of liberation so when o oh lord will you deliver me from this deadly material existence uh, this is his prayer so i am fearful of this material existence o oh lord and you are merciful to me so although i am trapped by my own karma please deliver me from this material existence how normally we call out to the lord when we are in trouble and now is the moment of victory and glory for prahlad if we consider what prahlad has achieved it is extraordinary even the great devatas were bowing down and subordinating themselves and brujimbhena vayasya they described that a hiranyakashipu would just raise his eyebrows devatas would start trembling and hiranyakashipu such prowess prahlad withstood that prahlad tolerated that he remained firm in his devotion and not once in the bhagavatam this prahlad exhibit any fear at all even when he is thrown among in a pit of snakes he is thrown from the cliff of a mountain he is taken into a burning fire he has uh, spears and swords being hurled towards him to pierce rip apart his body he has remained fearless but now he is saying my dear lord i am fearful i am fearful so and what is the relief from the fear my dear lord please let me come to you let me come to you when will you call me to your lotus feet so prahlad is at one level apprehensive over here and this will be revealed in the next chapter what is his apprehension he thinks that now that my father is dead i will be made into the king and he says the king is a very entangling position i do not want it oh lord so instead of giving me this royal position please call me to your lotus feet please let me come to your abode with you so this is his extraordinary prayer and even in the moment of victory he is not basking in his glory the normal material situation is say if somebody wins the world cup or say or live on world, world cup is at least cricket world cup is like a team sport but imagine somebody wins a tennis championship or a boxing championship or a, a chess championship where it's solo performance and then when the their final interview comes they may offer some credit to other people they'll say i worked so hard and then now i have achieved my dream this is what i lived for this is what i have practiced and struggled and uh, labored for so many years and decades so they they at one level delight in their success the prahlad is so sober here that rather than delighting in his success of course he is delighting in the presence of the lord but he is thinking this is not the glory i want in the world with everyone else being shown as lower than me actually prahlad is shown to be lower than the devatas also not just because he remained faithful to the lord when the devatas were bowing down to hiranyakashipu but also now the devatas offered prayers uh, none of those prayers had any effect the acharyas explain that why did lord narsimha dev not become pacified by the devatas prayers because because he felt that when my devotee was being persecuted you neither protected nor protested so my devotee was persecuted you never neither protected nor protested and now you are offering your prayers to me i don't i won't take your prayers seriously so he doesn't he is not satisfied with those prayers but when prahlad comes and offers prayers the lord becomes immediately pleased so this is the moment of glory but he is exhibiting humility the humility can come in various ways but one way humility comes is through a Awareness of our vulnerability. 
humility comes by awareness of our vulnerability that we are vulnerable at a material level we uh, our wealth our security that can be taken away but at a spiritual level we might be considered as spiritually advanced but we might be dragged down by temptations so prahlad is aware of, aware of his vulnerable position in the material world and thus he is humble so how does prahlad see the protection of the lord that's what i will discuss now in the remaining session so we will discuss on this topic of how god protects krishna says in the bhagavad gita kaunteya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati my devotees will always be protected but what does that protection actually mean so now basically this is a universal problem in material existence that the problem of evil if there is a good god why is there why do bad things happen in this world and especially why do bad things happen to good people now the whole bhagavatam in one sense dodges that question it hardly ever goes into the philosophy of karma where it says that it is because of your karma you are suffering there is not a single incident in the bhagavatam when somebody is suffering and it is told you because of your karma rather the bhagavatam changes the driving question ask not why bad things happen to good people ask what good people do when bad things happen to them ask what good people do when bad things happen to them and this is the theme throughout in the bhagavatam we see and in fact this is heightened more and more throughout the bhagavatam the parikshit maharaj committed a mistake at one level it was a serious mistake to offend a sage but it was not a catastrophic mistake it was not worth uh, getting a death sentence so small it is a okay a significant mistake but a completely disproportionate punishment for that a good person even some good people just mess up in life you know we all at some time or the other in our lives we face failure we face reversals and now when we face this how do we respond so that is the story of the bhagavatam itself how parikshit maharaj responds by taking shelter of the lord at one level you know life is tragic tragic means not in the sense of a tragedy movie where everybody cries at the end of the movie but tragic means that that in life bad things happen and there can be a tragic sense of heroism where amid tragedy somebody behaves in a heroic way so for parikshit maharaj what happens he gets cursed but he heroically takes shelter of the lord if you take the same theme forward in the fifth canto we have jad bharat maharaj small mistake it was actually he was trying to do a good thing he was compassionate to a deer but that compassion became excessive and he got deviated in the fifth canto of the shrimad bhagavatam and if you consider the sixth canto of shrimad bhagavatam the story of rutrasur rutrasur achitraketu laughs at shiva and it is not even out of derision it is out of astonishment that he laughs at shiva when shiva is sitting with parvati on his lap in us as addressing assembly of renunciates and for that he is cursed now at least in all these three cases the characters made some mistake maybe maybe medium mistake minor mistake or very small mistake but some mistake but if we consider prahlad in the seventh canto no mistake at all it is see when we do something bad and see even when we do something very bad and we get a proportionate result still we feel you know why did this happen to me if you do something very minor and we get a major bad effect for that this is unfair but probably the most difficult to bear is when we do something good and because of that good we get bad for prahlad actually we could say his devotion itself was the cause of his danger if he had just stopped worshiping vishnu then 
there would have been no danger for him now this is extremely difficult to bear when our, our when our what we are doing is good and the very good thing that we are doing that very thing becomes the cause of our suffering and we have seen this throughout human history that there have been those who have been devoted and they have been persecuted uh, our devotee is in russia especially not now of now also to some extent but before that in the ussr many of them were persecuted severely even in america some of the devotees they were accused of uh, that you are brainwashed and they subjected to deprogramming and all that so sometimes when we do good and bad things happen it is extremely difficult to bear but the bhagavatam tells us a story through character after character after character that when bad things happen to good people what do good people do so what does prahlad do that is the description now the question may come up why does if god loves us why does god let bad things happen to us so now here there are two levels of love there is the love that protects from danger and there is the love that prepares for danger the love that protects from danger means that say for example a child is very small and the parents may tell the child don't go on the street the mother may always be on a watch and uh, don't go near the vehicle anywhere just play in the courtyard or play in the home now later on that same mother or the same father will give the child a cycle and the child has to ride the cycle when the child starts riding a cycle the child may fall and now falling is painful falling can be dangerous injurious but it is only through falling that the child learns and the child grows so basically love sometimes lets us be exposed to danger so that we grow and similarly krishna while we are in the material world lets us sometimes be exposed to danger so that we grow in our lives so the normal conception is that i pray to god and then god protects me from danger but sometimes we may pray to god and still the danger may go on it is not that at that time krishna doesn't love us the love is preparing us for danger it's a different kind of love the love that is helping us to grow krishna loves us as we are but he loves us too much to let us stay as we are just like parents love their children as they are but the parents want the children to grow up to become more responsible to become more mature to study well to have a bright career so the parents love their children too much to let them stay as they are so similarly krishna loves us as we are but he loves us too much to let us stay as we are so we see this contrast between indra and prahlad indra is simply praying to the lord my dear lord we had lost our heavens because of hiranyakashipu and because we were not having the heavenly proper heavenly heavenly resources we could not perform yagyas for you so now that you kill hiranyakashipu now we will get the heavenly comforts heavenly resources and we will worship you now so he was thinking in terms of my dear lord thank you for protecting me from danger but prahlad he is not he is not saying that way that my dear lord please protect me from danger or you given me comfort back now he is at a different level in his consciousness so this is i'll talk about these two diagrams to illustrate the point that i am making over here so on the y axis is devotion on the x axis is danger so we could be in various situations in our life so for example if there is no devotion and there is no danger then what happens we are complacent we are comfortable oh i'm fine here about about more than two dec- decades ago when i started practicing bhakti uh, and started sharing the message of bhakti with others one of my uncles he told me i believe in god he is happy there and i am happy here so why do i need to change anything so what happens is that if there is no danger there is no devotion one becomes complacent 
then the other possibility is there is no devotion but there is danger and then what happens a person people become indignant indignant means they feel life is unfair how uh, how, how can life be like this how should the world be like this this is terrible there's an atheist in england who filed a court case to declare belief in a good god as a immoral and violent belief yes, that belief in god is immoral and violent why because he said that there is so much suffering in this world that when we see the suffering of this world how can any good god allow such a suffering therefore this belief in god itself he said god is a illusion but we should declare belief in god to be immoral and a horrible belief so that uh, we can reject we can get rid of the whole idea of god so what happens if we have no devotion and when we face danger we feel trouble we become indignant why is this happening to me now when there is we'll go to third the third part dependent See, when there is danger and if there is devotion, then what happens? We take shelter of the Lord. We become dependent on Him. My dear Lord, I can't do anything at this time. Just depend on You. Please protect me. That was what Prahlad was doing. Now all these demons were coming, trying to attack him. Prahlad was just a five-year-old boy. Couldn't do anything. So what did he do? Folded his hands and remembered the Lord. smaranam 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 he just depended on the lord whatever oh lord you want me to happen let it happen so of course in times of extreme danger and actually how we take shelter our devotion is tested not just when we are in danger we become dependent on the lord whatever you want let it happen but our devotion is tested even when danger goes away and comfort comes that is that is the time do we continue to take shelter of the lord that is when we are diligent diligent means we are determined we are faithful we are serious so in the third canto of the shrimad bhagavatam there is the description of how the child in the mother's womb desperately prays to the lord while suffering in the womb lord i just don't want to come out of this womb at least here there is suffering but i'm not suffering i'm remembering you and i'm calling out to you and that is it means i'm well situated so then the lord, the child in the womb prays to the lord so the child in the womb is in that quadrant of danger and devotion and he says let me stay in this situation only o lord but then if i come out of the mother's womb then i will get caught in illusion but then what happens the child comes out of the mother's womb and then the child becomes a uh, goes into illusion so does the lord not answer the prayer if the child doesn't want to come out of the mother's womb why does the lord let the child come out that is because uh, the devotion uh, which is uh, which is performed when we have no alternative now that is circumstantial devotion that is not intentional devotion that is not pure devotion circumstantial devotion means it's like suppose imagine uh if a boy proposes to a girl okay, please will you marry me please and the girl says why and the boy says you know because no other girl is ready to marry me what no <laughs> <laughs> now no girl will want to marry a boy like that unless of course she is also desperate for some reason but the idea is that just because there are no alternatives available like when we choose something that is more out of despair than out of out of love so if when we are in such danger that we cannot do anything about it and then we take shelter of the lord that is good but the devotion that is exhibited when we have no alternatives that is circumstantial devotion but the devotion that is manifested when we have alternatives that is intentional devotion that means that is what i want because i can't go anywhere so i go to the lord but intentional devotion means i can go other places but still i will go to the lord that is intentional devotion that is pure devotion 
so this is where prahlad is now now prahlad was in that dependent quadrant earlier where he was he was helpless but now when he has come to this quadrant of where he there is no danger now now he is thinking if there is no danger this material world is such a place of illusion that i might slip into the first quadrant this world is filled with temptations and if i fall I slip into that first quadrant then i will lose my devotion he later on says that how the jeev vaikto achyut vikarshati ma vitrupta he says all the senses are dragging me in different directions and i will get caught in illusion o oh lord so please let me be devoted to you so this is where he, he is praying to the lord let me come to you and he says how will i stay devoted to you that is by glorifying you by tvadvirya gayan mahamrita magna chitta when i glorify you i become absorbed in your glorification and thus i transcend all distress so i transcend the temptations of the world and i transcend the tribulations of the world now this is from our perspective when we will stay devoted to the lord when we will not devoted to the lord now let's look at it from the lord's perspective now why might the uh, lord not want us to be free from danger and be fully devoted to him why might he not want that he can just remove all problems in our life and let us be wholeheartedly devoted to him because sometimes it might appear that we want to practice bhakti but we may have sickness we may have financial we may we may have financial problems we may have some social problems because of which we can't practice bhakti so why might that happen so now let's see this from the lord's perspective the one of the basic teachings of the uh, scriptures is that the world is a place of distress when we say the world is a place of distress we can compare that to a hospital in a hospital distress is the is a feature distress is not the purpose of the hospital hmm? and the doctor there is not causing the distress the doctor is there to help cure the distress so the world is a place which is like a hospital and we are all diseased what is the disease although we are eternal beings we are all craving for temporary material things and because of that when those te temporary material things will go away sooner or later we will suffer and we will eventually uh, experience the trauma of death and rebirth again so the cure is that we redirect our desires from the temporary to the eternal and how will that happen for that krishna has a program so now imagine somebody is sick and they are in pain now when they are sick and they are in pain that is the time when they feel the desperate need for a doctor and when they go to a doctor the doctor gives two medicines one is a pain medication and the other is the curative medication so you can call it the analgesic and the antiseptic analgesic is the pain medication is a what deals with the pain antiseptic is what deals with the infection the uh, the core cause of the disease so now imagine if there is somebody who so so in our somebody who has no pain killer and no medicine then what will happen there will be complete misery so a similarly in this material world material security is like <coughs> material security is like a pain killer why a pain killer because a pain killer simply covers the pain it doesn't cure the pain so when we have material security we feel that things are fine but actually our misdirected desires are still there and those misdirected desires will bring severe consequences upon us so if somebody there is somebody who is sick and is having no medication no curative no uh, pain medication then 
they will be miserable and their misery will increase more and more hmm? on the other hand somebody takes only the painkiller and they don't take any medication at all then what will happen they will have relief from pain but that's deceptive that's dangerous why because inside the disease is worsening so similarly in this world if we have material comfort we have a material security but we don't have spiritual security so material security is like the pain killer spiritual security is like the curative medicine spiritual security means devotion absorption in krishna at least the intention for devotion and the intention for absorption in krishna material security is various comforts and other thing needs and comforts so now that will be like a if we have material security but no spiritual security that is like having a pain killer but not the curative medicine and we will be comfortable but temporarily and deceptively on the other hand if somebody has only the curative medicine and not the pain killer then they are in misery because the pain is there what do i do but thankfully at that time the pain will decrease although right now they are in pain but because they are taking the medication the pain will decrease at a material level or at a, from a external perspective the person in say quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 that means one who has a spiritual security and one who does not have spiritual security but if both of them are in misery both of them lack material security then both of them will be in misery mm -hmm. but the difference is that for one person the misery is increasing because there is no diagnosis and no treatment for the other person the misery is decreasing so hiranyakashipu who was comfortable was not just comfortable he was in royal comfort he was ruling all the three worlds but for how long for how long hiranyakashipu was in that temporarily comfortable quadrant and that quadrant soon got over prahla says that i saw the one who was the ruler of the world in one moment everything was lost for him therefore i don't ever want to go into the illusion thinking that material security will ever give me happiness so then the for us to be steadily situated it is good to be in the quadrant where we have both the pain killer and the medication and the curative medicine vidyam cha vidyam cha yastad vedo bhayam sah avidya mrityum tirtva vidyayamrutamashnate so it is said that vidyam cha vidyam cha we have the resources for dealing with the material world we have material knowledge and we have the resources for attaining the spiritual world it is just spiritual knowledge then we can pass through the world's journey comfortably so now when we are going through difficulties especially when we are the in the quadrant where material comforts are not available so the key to study devotion is focus not on expectation focus on contribution a focus on not on expectation means don't ask what is krishna doing for me ask what am i doing for krishna or what can i do for krishna that means that we focus on okay in this situation there is trouble there is distress but what can i do okay maybe i can do this small service maybe i can worship my deities maybe i can chant the holy names maybe i can remember krishna so what can i do in this situation so when we focus on contribution we see things are in our control now the very least contribution that we can do is we can think of krishna in our hearts the least contribution that we can do is we can maintain a cheerful attitude now prabhupad would often say chant hari krishna and be happy now some people think that these are two instructions so this is one instruction rather you chant hari krishna and you will become happy but actually they can be seen not as causal not as serial but parallel that we chant hari krishna we practice bhakti and we strive to be happy in the bhagavad gita in the 17th chapter krishna talks about the austerity of the body of the speech and of the mind and in the austerity of the speech austerity of the mind 
the first austerity that krishna says is very striking manaha prasad saumyatvam maunam atma vinigraha bhava samshuddhirtye tat tapo manasam uchyate so he says tapo manasam uchyate austerity of the mind what is it manaha prasad that it is cheerfulness of the mind it is being cheerful so krishna is saying be cheerful as an austerity even if things are going around are going wrong all around don't keep a go glum face don't have a long face and don't have droop shoulders and don't invite the world's pity no be cheerful be firm and move forward so what happens by this now this is at a material level people may ask tell us to be optimistic look at the positive side of things and that's fine but here there is spiritual optimism based on the understanding that yes there is a disease and this is a painful phase in the disease and this painful phase is something which is which is there and, but it will end tam sitikshasva bharata how will it end when will it end i do not know at this stage but it will end so let me be patient let me move forward so if we think what can i do for krishna now so when we talk about doing for krishna it just doesn't mean that we chant our name or chant the names of krishna we read about krishna but we are also cheerful when we are dealing with our family members and we are dealing with our colleagues and we are dealing with other people uh, even, we all have problems in the world so of course some of us may have more problems than others but try to be cheerful try to be a source of light and cheer instead of dark and dark and gloom and then the last point when we may say okay this is a phase when will this phase end well we don't know that we don't know what the future holds but we can know who holds the future in fact we do know we know it is krishna who holds the future and when prahlad was going through the trauma when prahlad was going through the uh, he was not traumatized he was not uh, feeling himself victimized but at least he was threatened when prahlad was being threatened and attacked and one after another assassination attempts were made against him he didn't know when it was going to end he didn't know when narsimhadev was going to emerge but he remained faithful because he knew that the lord is in charge and the lord will take care of things the real miracle in the uh, story of prahlad maharaj is not that the lord intervened and say when he was prahlad was thrown into fire he was not burned that when prahlad was thrown among a, among a, in a pit of snakes the snakes didn't bite him or the weapons that were were thrown to hurl towards him they didn't pierce his body yes those are miracles but those miracles were a result of another bigger miracle and that bigger miracle was prahlad stayed fixed in the remembrance of the lord now those outer miracles may sometimes happen they may not happen but the real big miracle see for example uh, when this, the, the spears were hurled at prahlad those spears didn't pierce him he was protected but we see later in the same shrimad bhagavatam when the snake bird was hurled at parikshit maharaj that snake bird bit him and parikshit maharaj died so the bhagavatam doesn't say that just as the miracle that happened to prahlad maharaj that he was protected from all danger at the material level that is what will happen to all devotees at all times no for parikshit maharaj the snake bird bit him but what is what is really special and what is common to both prahlad and parikshit is that both of them were absorbed in the remembrance of the lord they knew whatever the future brings through the if i stay connected with krishna now krishna will take me closer to him in the future and ultimately krishna will take me to him so by knowing the one who holds the future we can hold on to our patience we can hold on to our faith we can hold on to our positivity and whatever is the darkness right now through the darkness krishna will take us to the supreme light just as he took prahlad 
आणि असंच प्रल्हाद सेट दॅट नाव आय एम इन कम्फर्ट हाऊ विल आय ट्रान्झेंड दॅट टेम्पटेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द कम्फर्ट ही सेट बिफोर आय वॉज अब्झॉर्ब इन द रिमेंबरन्स ऑफ द लॉर्ड अँड वेन आय गॉट अपॉर्च्युनिटी आय ग्लॉरीफाय द लॉर्ड सो नाव ऑल्सो आय बी अब्झॉर्ब इन द रिमेंबरन्स ऑफ द लॉर्ड अँड वेन आय गेट द अपॉर्च्युनिटी आय ग्लॉरीफाय द लॉर्ड अँड इन दॅट वे आय विल ट्रान्झेंड द वर्ल्ड डिस्ट्रेस विजय पर दुरत्य वैतरण्य स्वीर्य गायन महामृत मग्न चित्ता आय एम नॉट अफ्रेड ऑफ दिस मटेरियल एक्झिस्टन्स बिकॉज वेन आय ग्लॉरिफाय यू आय बिकम आय गेट सच टेस्ट दॅट एव्हरीथिंग एल्स सीन्स इन सिग्निफिकंट एव्हरीथिंग एल्स मॅटर्स इन फॅक्ट आय फील्स समटाइम्स वेन वी सी बट अदर पीपल हू मॅट बी वेल्दियर दॅन आज हू मॅट बी मोर healthier than us or any way better than us you might feel oh they are enjoying life i am suffering but no actually if they are deprived of krishna it is we are not missing something they are missing something so it's a sho chetato vimukha chetasa indriyarthan maya sukhaya bharamudvahato vimudhan that vimudhan we are all deluded they are all deluded but if i can give them krishna then they will also be elevated this is the power of devotion that even amidst material deprivation even amidst material scarcity bhakti can give us spiritual abundance and through that spiritual abundance we all can become enriched in this world and beyond forever so i'll summarize i spoke today on the topic of how krishna protects and the way i spoke it was broadly by hmm, i spoke first about how this is when prahlad offered this prayer i am afraid of material existence where there is so much danger in this world what is the danger at one level there is a brutality one living being eats, eats another but even when there is comfort still this is a world of temptation and illusion so although this is the moment of victory for prahlad he is not basking in his glory he is maintaining his humility by remembering his vulnerability and then we say what is he asking for he is asking my dear lord when will i come to your lotus feet i don't want to go to this kingdom rather i want to come to your lotus feet so then i talked about how there is the problem of evil everybody suffers even good people suffer so the bhagavatam's question is not ask not why bad things happen to good people ask what good people do when bad things happen to them then we discussed why do bad things happen is this god not care well i talk about different levels of love there is the love that protects from danger and there is the love that prepares for danger it's like a mother who or a father who lets the child play a cycle and sometimes the child falls but through that the child learns and then we talked about how uh, the two quadrant diagrams we discussed that when there is no danger and no devotion we are complacent when there is danger and no devotion we become indignant why is this happening to me when there is danger and devotion we become we become dependent krishna you only can help me and it's good at that time we turn toward krishna but when there is no danger and yet there is devotion that is the indication of serious devotion that if we have no options and we choose devotion that is circumstantial if we have options and yet we choose krishna then that is pure devotion that is intentional devotion and then i talked uh, talk about second quadrant so this is from our perspective whether there is danger or no danger we try to stay devoted and why does krishna allow danger to come in what does it purpose it serve so we said this world is like a hospital material comforts material security like the pain killer spiritual security is like the curative medicine so if there is no material security and no spiritual security that is just simply misery that's like a patient who is miserable and whose misery is going to increase if there is material security but no spiritual security that like a patient who is taking pain killer but no curative medicine it's it's comfortable but it is deceptively comfortable temporarily and deceptively comfortable and then if somebody has the curative medicine but no painkiller that means they have, they have the devotion and the absorption but they don't have the material security 
then they may be miserable but it's only temporarily miserable it is superficially miserable so hiranyakashipu was deceptively comfortable he was ruling the world and prahlad was being persecuted but prahlad was internally absorbed so prahlad was only decreasingly miserable his misery was there but it was going to end and then we seek a steady situation where we have a basic level of material security and spiritual security also it's like in a hospital where there's pain killer and curative medicine both then the pain treatment goes steadily so that is where krishna will take us but sometimes if we don't are not in that quadrant material security is taken away we needn't uh, we didn't panic and overreact and uh, think that our devotion is not working or we need something else so then i talked about how we how can how can we move on when our material security is taken away then focus on contribution not on expectation not why is krishna not doing this to me or not giving this to me why is krishna not answering my prayers instead ask how can i serve krishna in this situation the focus what can we contribute you may say i am in so much trouble well the very basic thing we can contribute is a cheerful consciousness that uh, by having faith in krishna we stay cheerful that is the austerity of the mind so chant hari krishna and be happy it can be seen as two instructions practice bhakti and be of good cheer and if you do that then the just as the sickness will end if the curative medicine is being taken similarly the darkness that we are going through will end we don't know what the future holds holds but we do know who holds the future and if we hold on to krishna he will take us through whatever darkness and distress we might be in to a place of light and love as he did for prahlad thank you very much hare krishna are there any questions or comments yeah thank you very much prabhu such a wonderful uh, session um i have a basic question yes so uh, i like that chart what you have danger and devotion right um so how is that related in terms of we we also have this utsat nischaya dhairyat right dhairyat is the patience hmm. so where does the patience can we consider that prahlad maharaj was too very patient in those scenarios and uh, where does that fit in this okay good question the utsaha nischaya dhairyat is enthusiasm faith, faith and patience confidence and patience we could say so if, if we consider in terms of the treatment at the same hospital hospital metaphor so the patient has to have enthusiasm for taking the treatment now sometimes we think of treatment as you just lie down on the bed and take some medication but sometimes it might be that the patient has to do some exercises you know maybe do some workouts or some whatever exercise it is so the patient has to be enthusiastic about taking the medication and doing the exercises that the patient also has to have faith have confidence that the doctor is competent enough the doctor can cure me and while having that enthusiasm and confidence we also need patience it's not that yesterday i started the medication yesterday i did so much exercise i took the medication so why am i not feeling better today sometimes treatment takes time so if the disease is chronic the cure, cure also may take some time so we need to be patient through that period we need to persevere through that period so that's how patience comes in in terms of not having the expectation of immediate results we see even in the life of shila prabhupad it took decades for him he was simply doing everything for krishna's sake trying to share krishna message but it took decades before he got some significant results so let me that's where patience comes in does that answer your question Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Any other questions? Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Dhanavat Pranam. This is Nayana Bhagwan Das. Thank you so much Hare for Krishna. a wonderful class. Prabhu, I have a, a practical question. So when we hear such kind of enlightening lectures, uh, we really get inspired. That inspiration does not go for long. You know, that inspiration will have a break point. So are there any practical tips where we can follow to keep that? Um, inspiration whatever we get from here in this wonderful lectures consistently you know i like the second point of the last slide 
uh, I think you said you should know who holds the future, yes. something like that. Yes. Uh, so that that has given me a good um, hope and good good faith. But how can we keep that inspiration consistently? Yes. How can we keep our inspiration consistent? Mm -hmm. Basically, first is association. Now we need to associate with those who are who are inspired. That means just let me either hear classes, read books, or associate with devotees. So association can be physical, it can be digital, it can be whatever way. That's very important because faith, see our faith, especially not our, so much our faith, but especially our enthusiasm. It's like a, uh, it's not like a fixed deposit in the bank. It's very much like a investment in a volatile stock market. So sometimes the price booms up and sometimes the price goes down. Yeah. So why does that happen? Because the world is filled with ups and downs. So now anticipating that our enthusiasm will go down, we need to consciously make it a, make a plan to associate. Now we may also find that actually association itself sometimes inspires, sometimes doesn't inspire. That is true. So what we can do is that <clears throat> we need to at one level have some sort of association, some sort of by association, I'm referring to here, primarily hearing, but uh, hearing or reading or whatever. Some which is as a discipline. Say we may regularly read, read, read some Shila Prabhupada's books, hear from the spiritual master or uh, something like that. And then some of it, maybe say some of it, we consciously seek inspiration. Maybe if we, we may make a plan. I'm going to read Bhagavatam every day. Maybe even if I don't get much time, 15 minutes every day. That is going to be a discipline reading. But apart from that, if some other devotee tells me, oh, this class was so inspiring, let me hear it out. Or if we, we may, so we can, we can be responsible for seeking inspiration. We don't want simply to be inspiration hunters. We don't want to be nectar shopping. So a part of our sadhana time, we can have committed to reading or hearing one particular subject on a regular basis or from one particular speaker. But others, we can also have variegated hearing where we are seeking inspiration. That's association. That is the first thing. The uh, second thing would be that we need to recollection. Recollection means that when we start feeling our enthusiasm going down, at that time, if we can remember the times when our enthusiasm was up, now how we felt at that time, how it was energizing, how it was uplifting, how it was enriching. Maybe uh, write it down how you felt when you are uplifted and read that. Or if we were doing some enthusiastic services with each other, with others, we had some special moments because of that uplifting association, then have some photographs of that. We need to, when the present becomes discouraging, then we have to draw. We can't draw immediately from the present. We may have to draw from the past. When the gopis were hoping all the time, when will Krishna come back? When will Krishna come back? When Krishna was not coming back day after day after day, how were they sustaining themselves? The, it was not from the present. It was from the past. We live in the present, but we don't live for the present. We live for something bigger than the present. We live for Krishna. Sometimes the past is uh, present can be disappointing. So then we draw from our past whatever we have had uh, uplifting memories, and we so so there's association and there's recollection. And the third will be dedication. Dedication means that Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that yattadagre vishamiva pariname amritopamam that that which tastes like poison will taste like nectar in the end. So when we, when we feel our enthusiasm going down, we just, we just need to understand this, I'm going through a poison phase right now. I just persevere. If I persevere, the nectar phase will come. So in this way, association, recollection and dedication, if we have, then um, we, can, uh, we can maintain our enthusiasm. 
okay thank you so much prabhuji thank you so shall we stop here is it asam okay i have a question okay last question yeah prabhu uh, my pranam hare krishna um how do we know how much devotion we have for krishna how do we measure that and are we ever going to be delivered in this lifetime or i'm going to be reborn over and over okay how do we measure our devotion and can we know whether we will be delivered at the end of this lifetime or will be reborn generally the growth of devotion is incremental so that's why it's difficult to very easily quantify it just like if you have a small child now every day you feed the child but if the, ch- if the child doesn't want to eat and say so you, ch- you tell the child you take this milk and you you take this milk take this food you'll become strong you know you'll become well built and then like he takes drinks a glass of milk and he looks at his muscles hey they didn't become bigger what is this so it is incremental over a period of time we see it happening so broadly uh, the devotion is seen bhakti paresha anubhav virakti ranyatra cha that when we practice bhakti par isha anubhav we get experience of krishna and the experience of krishna is so enriching that virakti ranyatra cha that other things we become detached from them we de- we become less dependent on them so broadly speaking we can see our devotion from how how eager are we for krishna abhyasetya samartho si atha chittam samadhatum na shakno si mai sthiram abhyas yogo mam ichha pun dhananjaya we practice sadhana bhakti by which our attraction to krishna will increase our desire for krishna will increase so how eager are we for krishna that's one parameter for devotion and the other is that you know other things happen in our life how much are we affected by them so now of course we can't be entirely unaffected but what we will see is that over a period of time if in the past we had been immensely affected now we will be less disturbed so this if we can consider this problem we had come upon me 10 years before or 15 years ago or 5 years before before i was practicing bhakti i might have been complete i might have completely crumbled now i am disturbed but my disturbance is much lesser so similarly the material allurements we may still be allured we may still be but not that much so basically increase in our attraction towards the lord and decrease in our in the disturbance that material things cause in our consciousness those two things can be the broad parameters of our devotion and as far as whether we will attain krishna or not that is something which we can be concerned about but not obsessed about can be concerned why because we do want to go to krishna but what happens is if we become too obsessed about it that will simply create an element of speculation and uncertainty and what we want is dedication we need to know that krishna wants us to come back to him in fact krishna wants us to come to him more than what we even want to go to him prabhupad would say so if we strive to choose krishna during our life journey and by repeatedly so we have we have temptations we have tribulations we can let our thoughts get caught in other things but we try to choose krishna our thoughts go elsewhere we choose krishna our thoughts go elsewhere we choose krishna so if we do like this by regularly choosing krishna what will happen is we will show krishna that we want him more than the world <coughs> we may still want things of the world but if at least by the time of our death by the time of our last moments in this world if our desire for krishna has become more than our desire for the world and its objects then krishna has no reason to keep us in the world krishna will take us to him and even if we do not go to krishna see we need to know that krishna will never abandon us if we consider before we came to bhakti uh, we were probably living uh, materialistic lives we might have been pious or whatever 
but we were definitely not devoted to krishna and we could have we could have gone in any part of the world we might or might not have met devotees so even when we were doing nothing for krishna still krishna somehow intervened in our life and brought us to his lotus feet at least brought us to the path to him so when we were doing nothing for krishna if krishna loved us enough and took care enough care of us to help us bring on the path to bring us to the path to him now if we are trying to serve krishna if we are trying to offer our life to krishna why will krishna ever abandon us ma bhir mandamano vichintaya bahudha yamishchiram yatana naivami prabhavanti paparipava swami nanu shridarah आलस्यम व्यपनीय भक्ति सुलभं ध्यायस्व नारायणम लोकस्य वसनापनो दंकरो दास्यस्य किं न क्षमः इन मुकुंदमाला स्तोत्र महाराज कुलशेखर से माय डियर माइंड डोंट वरी ओ आई हैव डन दिस रॉंग आई हैव डन दैट रॉंग मे बी आई हैव टू गो टू हेल एंड सफर दिस मे बी ओ लेजी माइंड डोंट वरी अबाउट दीस थिंग्स डोंट यू नो नैवामि प्रभवन्ति pap ripava don't you know that your lord is the enemy is the is the defeater and destroyer of sin and not only the destroyer of all sins but is also swami nanu shridharah your lord is also the lord of the goddess of fortune how will he let any misfortune come to your life and then he gives the evidence he says that there are millions of people who uh who are who go to temples and who worship god and they are not really interested in god per se but still they worship and they get some results otherwise why would they keep coming to the temples they may not always get what they want but they do get something so he is saying the lord fulfills the desires even of those who come to him simply for their own purposes lokasya vasana apnodan karo In general, people he remove, he frees them from their distress. Then, dasyasya kim nakshamaha, and somebody who is trying to be devoted to him, somebody is trying to serve him. And if that person has done some wrongs, so that person is somehow inadequate. Why will the Lord not overlook that? So, what should you do? Alasyam vyapaniya, bhakti sulabham dhyayasvanara yanam. Just give up lethargy, give up. anything that distracts us from krishna and with whatever energy we have dhyasva narayanam just remember lord narayan bhakti sulabham bhakti is not that difficult if we just see see it simply as offering our heart to krishna in whatever situation we are in yes krishna will take care of remaining things okay we do our part for krishna and we can rest assured that krishna will do his part for us so thank you very much shri narsimha dev you. bhagwan ki jai yeah. thank you prabhu pa hari krishna prahlad maharaj ki jai jai prabhu pa thank you prabhu jai thank you bhai gaur bhai manande thank you prabhu hari hari thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much hari krishna